We had our second no-hitter thrown in back-to-back weeks. This time it was Carlos Rodon of the Chicago White Sox. Look at him. Happy as ever. Carlos Rodon, third overall pick in 2014. Two major arm surgeries, shoulder, and then Tommy John. The White Sox non-tendered him, just said goodbye last winter, and then he re-signed with him anyway because he said he's been part of this rebuilding process and this is the team he wants to win with, and he's excited that they're good. He only pitched 42 innings since 2018, and he went into the ninth inning with a perfect game. Look at the strikeouts. He didn't have a single strikeout in the first three innings. After five innings, he only had two, and then they started coming a little more at the end because his velocity ramped up. I like looking at the pitch mix. We got fastball, slider, changeup, curveball, a lot of fastballs, good amount of sliders. Those ticked up in the last two innings a lot. Changeups, and then only three curveballs the entire game and I was like when did those come and they were all first pitch get me over curveballs let me just get oh one on this dude real quick then show him something he hasn't seen before this is the cool part the miles per hour on the fastball ticked up the entire the game started in the low 90s ended in the high 90s he said because the White Sox had such a big lead he didn't need to throw And no one ever got on base. He didn't have to, like, tax his arm. So he could just get out, sit in low 90s, and then he ramped it up towards the end when the pressure was on. That's pretty badass. So let's go to the top of the ninth inning. Nailer's up. He goes down 0-1. He goes down 0-2. And then a little, like, tapper race to first base. Jose Abreu with the stretch. Every perfect game, no hitter, has a crazy play. And that was this one, the stretch by Abreu and Rodon. Or Don just says, you all right? He's like, yeah, look at this. He just beat him. If Naylor's right hand hits first, he's safe. If he doesn't slide, he's probably safe. Abreu goes all out to make the play. At this time, it's a perfect game. That was to keep the perfect game intact. Umpire gets the call right, which is good news. They replay it anyway, and they say, no, we got it right. We're the best. Never doubt our replay. Next batter, Perez is up. 0-2 0-2 again, both fastballs. He goes third fastball. He's pumping 98. Then he's going to drop a back foot slider, and oh, no, hits him right in the toe. And look at him. He's just laughing it off, chuckling a little bit. It hit him. It got him. Damn. And then he goes to Perez like, hey, it gets you, man? He's like, yeah. He's like, come on. Perez will say, I'll show you in a second what Perez says, but look, just on the toe. Damn, perfect back foot slider. Here's what they had to say about it. To be honest, I really didn't think he had a perfect game until I got hit. I thought he had a no hitter going on, but I really didn't think he had a perfect game. So uh, it's hard, man. You know, I'm not going to try to stand there and take, you know, get hit, you know, especially after a night like tonight uh, that it was cold, you know. That's just part of the game. It was just one of those where, like, you think back foot, but obviously you don't want to put it on his back foot. Um, he did the right thing. He stayed in there. He said, I'm going to let it hit me. You're getting the perfect game. And I would do the same thing if I was hitting. You got to earn it. I was just like, hey, that gets you? And he was like, yeah, I got me. So I was just like, that was, that was the only exchange. It wasn't nothing like, <laughs> nothing mean at all. Next batter, he goes back foot slider again and almost hits another guy, gives him happy feet. He starts dancing around a little bit. 1-0, and oh, goes fastball up top, 1-1, one and one, fastball up top again, 1-2, and two, slider in the zone to punch him, and it looks like the batter thought that was going to be another back foot slider because you see his right foot dance away like it was going to drop down there, and then it was in the zone. He looks at him and says, come on, man. Trying to impress people here, making me look stupid. Next batter up to keep the no-hitter intact. 0-1 outside with the changeup, and then comes back 97 fastball. 1-2, one strike away. Luplo lays off that one. Good job by him. Fouls off that one. I think this is, oh, okay, he takes that one again. 3-2 and two is the count. Big foul ball down the left field line. Left side on a slider. Now Luplo's trying to adjust his eyes. Oh, my God. Scary. Game on the line. Full count. Does he walk him? Does he strike him out? It's put in play. Third baseman's got it. Shortstop is celebrating early, and the no-hitter stays. Now it's a big old celebration. Moncada with the big hug. I mean, it was a cold night, and Rodon's going no shirt. 
no undershirt, buttons open. Now he's getting water all over him. Think he cares? Not one bit. Your Min Mercedes sprints out. Big boy moving. He had a big home run in this game. Jumps up on the catcher. Just good times all around. I like some of the personal little celebrations. We're going to see him and the catcher. First time that they ever worked together in a major league game, and they combined for a no-hitter. You hear them both talking about it right here. I've never caught a no-hitter before. That was the most incredible thing that I've ever been a part of behind the plate. That was good. We were on the same page. I, I don't think I shook at all. I just, whatever he put down, I was throwing. Everything was working. No matter what I put down, uh, he was putting it where I wanted to. He definitely didn't shake off from, like, the third or fourth on. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's how it goes the first time he worked together. Then we got... Big old bear hug from fellow pitcher Lucas Giolito, who has a podcast on the John Boy Media Network ad. And uh, look at this. White Sox went eight years without a no-hitter, and now Lucas Giolito and now Lucas Giolito and Carlos Rodon have thrown them in back-to-back years, and we are just at April 14th. White Sox now have 20 in franchise history. So a big old hug from two dudes who have thrown no-hitters for the White Sox. Gotta love that. Giolito gives them a I mean, just a nice hug, Lucas. And a little head nod, a little proud wrinkles around the eyes. And then he goes for his postgame interview and just the the most cavalier and chill welcome to a postgame interview for a guy who just threw a no-hitter. What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, man? Congratulations. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Where's your mind right now, Carlos? Uh, on a toe ball. <laughs> on a toe ball? Toe hitter. That's what we're calling it, just the toe hitter. Hey, if I told you a couple years ago when you've been dealing with all the injury stuff that you were going to throw a no hitter, what would you have told me? Take a hike. <laughs> Take a hike. Pretty good response there. Every single thing that he said in his postgame interviews were awesome. This this uh, reporter asked what he's going to do with the ball. Are you going to give it to Cooper South? Is that what people do? Oh, no I've never thrown a no hitter before. That's another question I should have asked Lucas. I'd say keep the ball. If it was me, I think I'd just keep it. Maybe give it to mom, maybe give it to dad. They also asked him, when did he start to realize that something special was happening? In that 3 1 count, he knew I was throwing a fastball. I knew I was throwing a fastball. You guys probably knew I was throwing <laughs> a fastball. And someone's dog in Kentucky knew too. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, when that ball was caught, and he came off the bat at like 170 miles an hour. That's kind of where I started feeling it. You need a bunch of breaks. Hard hit ball right at someone. That's going to get you there. Toe hitter shirts are on sale at the store. And here's the parting words from Carlos Rodon. It just feels good to finally sit here and tell you uh, I dominated today. And it was it felt good. 